Good morning, class. So today we are going to start the chapter fraction. So let us write what fraction of the shaded portion is of that of the figure. So you can see four portions are shaded out of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So you write the number of shaded portion as the top divided by the total number of parts. So that is seven. So your fraction for this figure is four by seven. So you write the total number of shaded that is shaded will be on the top and the total will be always in your down. Okay. Whatever the number that is written on the top is known as the numerator. It is called the numerator. Okay. Whatever the number that is written on the top is called the numerator and the number written in the bottom is called the denominator. Denominator. Okay. So always on the top you write the number of shaded portion and on the down you have to write the total number of portion. But one thing that you must remember that the total number should be divided equally. Like here you see this is a irregular figure. This is a irregular figure because this portion is not divided equally. So let us redraw this figure by right? making all the sections equal. So now every part is equal. Every part is equal and we can write that it is one part. So one divided by how many total part? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So eight total parts. So this shaded portion is one by eight of the total. Let us write, so this is a regular figure, so every part is equal. So you can easily write the shaded portion. So shaded portion is 2 divided by how many total portions are there? 1, 2, 3, 4. So 4 portions are there. Okay, so 2 by 4. Now we can reduce this fraction into simpler form. So let us see in which table this 2 also goes and 4 also is also. Uh, divisible. So in the table of 2, 2 1 times and 2, 2 times. So this is reduced to 1 by 2. So always try to reduce the fraction when it is divisible. Okay, next we are going to see that if the fraction is given and you are told to shade the portion, how we are going to do that. So it has been told that shade 3 by 4 portion of this figure. So we see the total number of divided parts is 4, ok, there are 4 parts, 1, 2, 3, 4 and we have to shade 3 out of the 4, so let us shade any 3 of them, 1, 2 and 3, so this is your 3 by 4 portion of the figure, next is 1 by 3rd we have to shade of this, but you see there are 6 equal divisions of this figure but in the denominator which represents the total number of parts is only 3 so we have to make it 6 somehow so let us multiply both the numerator and the denominator by 2 so this becomes 2 by 6 this becomes 2 by 6 so now the total parts is equal to the number of parts given in the figure and we can shade two parts out of the six so it will become one and two parts any two parts you shade it will be two by six or one by three two by six is same as one by three next is one by four so here we have four parts so let us see whether we have four parts or not one two three and four yes we have four parts and we have to shade one part of it so let us shade this part only and it represents 1 by 4 of the figure. The next topic of our discussion is representation of fraction on a number line. So always remember that a proper fraction lies between 0 and 1. So let us draw the number line between 0 and 1. So on the left hand side we will put 0 and on the right hand side we will put 1. And let us represent the fraction 3 by 4 on the number line. So the denominator always denotes the number of parts, equal parts in which we have to break 
the number line. So let us break the number line between zero and one into four parts. So this is one part, two part, three part, and fourth part. One part, two part, third part, and fourth part. So we have divided the number line into four parts. So the first part will be represented by one by four. The second part will be two by four. The third part will be three by four. And the fourth part will be four by four. That is equal to one. Whenever the numerator and denominator are same, the value comes to one. Now we can circle three by four, and this gives the representation of three by four on number line. Next, let us look at the type of fractions. So the first type of fraction is the proper fraction in which the numerator is always lesser than the denominator, like right? five by six, ten by twelve. Okay, so always if the numerator is lesser than the denominator, the type of fraction is known as proper fraction. Now, if the denominator is lesser than the numerator, or the numerator is bigger than the denominator, like in case of thirteen by ten, it is called improper fraction. The numerator is bigger than the denominator, so this is called improper fraction. And the third type of fraction is that the mixed fraction. So you will have a natural number part. And a fraction part. So this two is called the natural number part, and three by five is called the fraction part. So these are the three types of fraction: proper fraction, improper fraction, and mixed fraction. The next topic of our of our discussion is how to convert improper fraction into mixed fraction. So let us take a improper fraction. I suppose twenty divided by three. So here the numerator is bigger. And the denominator is smaller, so this is an improper fraction. So let us divide this. So it goes six times. The remainder is two. So you write six, then the denominator, uh, that remainder two divided by the denominator, that is three. So your fraction will be. The quotient six, then the remainder divided by the denominator three. So six whole two by three will be your answer. Next, how to convert any mixed fraction into improper fraction? So let us take one mixed fraction like two whole three by five. Okay, so this is a mixed fraction two whole three by five. So we will multiply this two. Okay, two into five and Add three, so it will be five into two is ten, ten plus three is thirteen, and don't forget the denominator that is five. So multiply these two and add the numerator. So two into five is ten, plus three is thirteen, and divided by the denominator that is five. So two or three by five in this form is thirteen by five in improper form. Next, let us see how to do this type of problems. That is, replace uh, the black with the number of fill in the blanks. So, two by three is equal to something by fifteen. So, you have to replace, you have to put the appropriate value here. So, three multiplied by one is fifteen. So, three into five is fifteen. So, that means on the top also you have to multiply with five. So, this becomes five into two is ten. Okay, so C in the down commas you have to multiply to get 15. That is, you divide 15 by 3 to get 5. So that means you multiply the top also. So 2 into 5 will get 10. Next, let us see. It is given 4 by something equal to 12 by 15. Okay, so 4 into how much is 12? So 4 into 3 is 12. So how much into three is twelve? Uh, how much into three is fifteen? How much into three is fifteen? So five into three is fifteen. So this will be five. So this way you have to do this type of problems. Next, how to check whether the pair of fractions are equivalent or not? So we will use the cross multiplication method. Cross multiplication. Okay. So 
what we will do? We will multiply the numerator of the first into the denominator of the second. So like this, we are going to multiply A into 40. So that comes out to be 120. And we are going to multiply again the denominator of the first with the numerator of the second. So cross way we are going to multiply. That is 10 into 12. So this is also coming to 120. So if the answer comes same, then the pair of fractions are equivalent. Fractions are Equivalent. Okay, the fractions are equivalent. Let us check this 7 into 11. So this comes to 77. And multiplying the denominator and the numerator of the other two. So 13 into 5. So this comes to be 65. So the values are not same. One is 77, another is 65. So the fractions are not equivalent. So here, not equivalent. So this is how you check how uh, check whether the two fractions are equivalent or not. Okay. So the next topic of discussion is how to reduce the fraction into its simplest form. So we have been given a fraction. 276 by 115 and we have to convert it into simplest form. So let us try and factorize both the numerator and denominator. So the smallest prime number by which 276 is divisible is 2. So we go 1 and 3 and 8. Then again we will divide by 2 which is 6 and 9. It is over divisible by 2, it is divisible by 3. So, it will be 23. And 23 is a prime number, we will end there. It can not be further divided. Let us now find the prime factor of prime factorization of 115. So, it will be divisible by 5, 2, and 3. So it is no more divisible. So we can write 276 by 115 as in place of 276 we can write 2 into 2 into 3 into 23. Divided by in place of 115 we can write I into 23. So now Cancel the common factors. So on the numerator also we have 23, denominator also 23. So this case cancel. And the remaining and the remaining will be an answer. So it will be 2 into 2 is 4, 4 into 3 is 12. Divided by 5. So the simplest form after reducing 276 by 115 is 12 by 5. So let us now look at how to convert the fractions into equivalent like form. Equivalent like form means the denominator of all the fractions should be same. So how to make the denominator of all the three fractions same? So first step will be to find the LCM of the denominators. So let us find the LCM of 4, 6 and 8. It goes 2 times. 3 times and 4 times. Again it will be divisible by 2, 1, 3 is not divisible, divisible so only 3 will come and 2. So again, so now no more common factor is there, so the LCM will be 2 into 2 into 3 into 2. So that is 24. So LCM is 24. So we are going to write 3 by 4 as something by 24. Something by 24. So 4 multiplied how much times is 24? 4 multiplied 6 times is 24. So above also we have to multiply with 6. So it will come to 
18. Then 5 by 6 equal to something 5. 24. So 6 multiplied, how much time is 24? 6 multiplied 4 times is 24. So above also, you have to multiply 4 times. So 5 goes on 20. And 7 by 8 equal to something by 24. So 8 multiplied how much time is 24? 8 multiplied 3 times is 24. So above also, you have to multiply 3. So 7 into 3 is 21. Okay. So your answer will be 18 by 24. 20 by 24 and 21 by 24. 18 by 24, 20 by 24 and 21 by 24. So these are having the same denominator 24, 24. So they are equivalent like fractions. So the next topic of our discussion is how to compare fractions. So there can be three cases. One, the denominator is same for both the fraction. Number two, the numerator is same for both the fraction. And third case is neither the denominator nor the numerator is same for both the fractions. So if the denominator is same for both the both the fractions, like here you will see 7 and 7, both the denominators are same, are the same. 7 here also, 7 here also. So you see the numerator. Which fraction will be having? The fraction that is having the greater numerator will be greater. So here you see 5 is there, here you see 3 is there. So 5 is greater than 3 and the denominator are same same, 7 and 7. So the 5 by 7 fraction will be bigger than 3 by 7 because the numerator of this fraction is greater than the numerator of this fraction. Next is if the numerator is same, like you see here also 1, here also 1. The numerator is same but the denominator is different, here 3, here 5. So in this case when the numerator is same, the fraction which is having the smaller denominator will be bigger in value. Okay, the fraction which is having the smaller denominator will be bigger. Like here, three is smaller than five. So this whole fraction will be bigger than one by five. The smaller the denominator, greater the value of fraction. But you have to remember that this is only when uh, the numerators are same same. Okay, so if the numerator is same then the fraction having a smaller denominator will be bigger in value, bigger in size. And next case is neither the denominator nor the numerator are same. Like numerator 4 and 5 different and denominator also 5 and 6 different. So in this case we are going to convert them into equivalent like fraction. So let us find the LCM of 5 and 6 is 30. Okay, 5 and 6 has no common factor, so it will be the multiplication of 2. 5 into 6 that is 30. So if you convert 4 by 5, it will do something by 30. So 5 multiplied how much time is 30? 5 multiplied 6 times is 30. So above also the numerator 4, you have to multiply 6. So this becomes 6 into 4 is 24 and next 5 by 6 also we are going to convert into something by 30. So 6 multiplied how much is 30? 6 multiplied by 5 is 30. So above also we have to multiply with 5. So this is 5 into 5 becomes 25. So you can see now the denominator of both the fractions has become same, 30 and 30. So the fraction will be, which will be having the greater numerator will be greater in value. So 25 by 30 is greater than 24 by 30. Okay, 25 by 30 is greater than 24 by 30. What is 25 by 30? 25 by 30 is 5 by 6. 5 by 6 is greater than 4 by 5. 
okay so this is how are you going you are going to compare the fractions